Hi, welcome to Marker Board Videos. Today's video is about machines. I've been getting a lot of questions about mechanical advantage and efficiency, and so I thought I'd address it in the video. Um, first, let's define a machine. And a machine is a device that does one of two things. Either it multiplies a force, or it changes direction of a force. It's got to do one of those two things in order to be considered a machine. Machines are all based on conservation of energy, and one of the really important things to know about a machine, we're going to talk about efficiency in a minute, and we're going to measure this, but that uh, a machine cannot create energy. You can never get more energy out of a machine than you get into a machine, than you put into a machine. So what good are machines? Well, we're going to show you exactly how you can use them. I'm sure you already know. But conservation of energy is the basis. The machine output can never be greater than the machine input. That machine cannot create energy. The machine can transfer energy. It can transform energy, so it can move energy from one place to another, or it can change it from one type to another, but it can't create energy. So let's talk just for a minute about a lever. A lever is the simplest machine, and I know that you know there's three classes of simple machines, or th three classes of levers, and that um, you've been working on this since you were a little kid, so we're not going to beat it up, but I just want to remind you that a, a, a lever is simply a bar that pivots at some point. We call that point the fulcrum. The work is done on one end and the load is on the other end. So let's look at this example. We've got the blue line and the red dotted line. So let's say we start with the blue line and we're going to actually push down on the blue line and it's going to go a big distance. On this side, it just moves up a little distance. So let's pretend like you pivot. You push down on this side and it becomes the red line, okay? Just wanna make sure you understand what's going on. So we push down here with a little force and we move it a big distance. And what happens on this side is it moves a little distance, but you have a big force. So little force times big distance equals big force times little distance. And that's the advantage of a, of, a, of a lever. You can use a little bit of force on this side and have a huge difference on this side. That's called mechanical advantage. And mechanical advantage is a ratio. There's lots of ways to write ratios. You can write them as a fraction. You can write them as a number with a colon in between. And if you just say the mechanical advantage is two, like a whole number, you know we're really saying it's two to one, that we're really not just saying it's two. So how do you calculate it? Well, it's the output force to the input force, or the output force divided by the input force, if you want to say it that way. Sometimes it's hard to measure force. It's hard to, it's hard to wrap our arms around it or to, to figure out what that force is. Sometimes it's easier to measure distance, so we can do the inverse. The input distance divided by the output distance, or the ratio of the input distance to the output distance. I just want to call your attention to the fact that it's output force, input force, but when it comes distance, the words output and input are flipped, and it's input distance, output distance. So let's look at this. You have an option. You can slide this very, very massive block up a five meter ramp, or you can try to lift it one meter straight up. Well, if you're trying to do things easier, you're probably going to slide it up that ramp. The mechanical advantage is the distance. So we have five meters is what we're actually pushing it, as opposed to one meter. So it's a five to one ratio, or the mechanical advantage is five to one. If this were six, and this distance were three, it'd be six to three. Can you reduce that? Sure, you can say two to one, and you can even say two if you understand that when you say two, you're really saying the mechanical advantage is two to one, okay? Efficiency is related to mechanical advantage, and it seems to be the same thing, but it's not exactly. Efficiency deals with work. So the amount of useful work that is put out of a machine to the total work that's put into the machine. Now, it'd be great if we could have a machine that was 100% efficient, but we can't. There's no such thing as a 100% efficient machine. Why? Because as a machine runs, as a machine does work, things heat up, and heat is a form of energy. So you lose some of the work in terms of energy. Sometimes you hear a sound, and sound is another form of energy where you lose where you lose energy from the total that you put in. Um, the third way, not very often, but every once in a while, you're going to see a spark or some kind of light. Light is another form of energy. So you cannot have 100% efficiency because some energy is transformed 
usually into heat, sometimes into sound, once in a while into light. There's one more way to calculate efficiency though, and you can also calculate efficiency by taking the actual mechanical advantage over the theoretical mechanical advantage. Now theoretical is what you should get if everything was absolutely perfect and you lost no energy to heat and everything was ideal and there was no friction and no air resistance and, and none of that. That's the theoretical. But what you actually get is way different. So if you want to calculate efficiency a different way, you take actual mechanical advantage and you divide that by theoretical mechanical advantage.